Hi everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Welcome to my channel if you're new and a big warm hello to my subscribers. I love you guys. Today I'm bringing you an extra special video. I put together my nine top favorite coffee can home decor DIYs and a tenth bonus one in there for this summer. And as always, I hope you enjoy the show. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. I saw this super cute craft from Wayfair, but look at that price. So here's a free printable I created to try and catch the energy of that. And I'm using a coffee can. Someone called me the queen of coffee cans on Instagram. Thank you for that. I, a bunch of people came on. <laughs> I, I might be getting a reputation for that. My husband drinks like one of those a week, you guys, and it makes me sick to throw them away. So I took this can outside and I gave it a coat of primer and I, the colors that I wanted to use are the cheaper acrylic paints from Apple Barrel and I knew they weren't going to adhere so I went ahead and used a primer and paint Rust-Oleum mix there so that the acrylic would have something to grab onto and it worked out really well. I'm going for this color here for my first base color and I've also talked about this in previous videos if you want a look a certain color you'll often find that it's a blend of many different colors to get that final result it's never just one color and it's like your hair your hair has many different colors in it but you'll look at it and go oh someone's brown or brunette or blonde or red there's actually a lot of colors going on in there to create that one color and paints no different so i always start usually with a minimum of three different paints to get one look. So I didn't want to do the exact same craft because I don't know if you noticed you guys, it said something about violet soap, I think on that label, cause I'm, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it right. Savon, Savon, and then with the do it in little French, but I think that's soap. So I wanted mine to definitely say something about French lavender because they're actually very famous in France for the beautiful lavender that they grow. They've got the same thing going on in the UK. You know, those that part of the world over the Atlantic Ocean there, they grow some beautiful lavender. Very fragrant, very beautiful. And so here I did that color blue and then I used the purple. You can see it on the palette right next to it there. Add a little bit of the pavement color by Apple Barrel because I do want to get those undertones that make it look a little antiqued, but I don't want to get carried away on the distressing. And then I want to get a little bit lighter because this is a spring craft. So I'm using a violet color. Any violet color will do just for the final. And that one, you know, my brush is a little damp, so it kind of gives it that cloudy look, which I really like. And then it shows all the other colors through it. So the next step is I'm cutting this. I don't want to tear it. I don't want to even antique around the edges of this label. I really want it to be clean like the craft we saw in the picture. And I'm going to use Mod Podge, of course. I got a little carried away with the Mod Podge. It's okay. I ended up doing the entire container right there and then and then putting the label on because I got a little carried away. And of course, I'm just applying the label. And I've talked about this in previous videos as well. I'm using a sponge here. It's a little bit wetter than damp to press down and I'm pressing really hard. I'm not just, you know, dabbing it. I'm really pressing down. And that, for me anyway, works brilliantly to get the wrinkles out and to get the paper down in the grooves so that it looks like it's one unit, you know, not paper on top of the metal can, which would make it look kind of cheap. So now I'm just picking out of my florals some lavender here. And I don't know, thank goodness, I had the fortitude. I don't know what made me do it. I've never done it before, but I thought I should film with a second camera to the side just in case something happens one day. Well, I lost the footage where I kind of wound up a pool noodle there and used it for foam, but we got a side view here. It's beautiful. Let me know what you guys think, but I love this.
I saw this online and I love the green but I don't like the checkers on the bottom and I saw these I love the look of the labels but I don't want more white I have a lot of white so I found this printout and boy did I have to hunt for this printout you guys that's copyright free it's the only decent one out there I will leave the link below in my description box and all I did was make three copies and then just I guess crop um, the three herbs that I really am interested in growing. And yes, I cut my finger during this DIY. I wanted to make sure you guys saw that. I, my husband drew a happy face on it to make me feel better, but I hurt myself during this DIY. And that's the paint from the uh, Home Depot that I've talked about in previous videos. That's 50 cents for eight ounces. That's four times the amount of the apple barrel paint. I called it boo-boo paints in previous videos and one of my commentators went in I guess and asked for boo-boo paint and the guy looked at her like she was nuts and you know you guys I'm nuts that's that's the word I use for it it's not called boo-boo paints bless her heart it's actually paint samples that people ask for and I guess they don't like it so they don't take it so Home Depot sells them off for 50 cents and they're usually high quality paints I always look for the ones in matte but if you're, you know, you want a gloss one, those are available too. And they're usually, more often than not, they include primers. So they just tend to be really good paints. So here's a little trick. I got another trick for you guys. When you don't feel like soaking your paper in coffee or tea or whatever else to stain it, you just water down some chocolate sprinkle. It works like a charm. And I just water it, water it down. I used a Kleenex this time. You can use anything just to blot it up. But you just water it down paint it on it's like super 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 water watery watcher paint and you blot it with your um, Kleenex and I wanted mine a little darker so you can do it more than once but it works great for substituting tea and coffee when you know I have an ink printer so that's not you know I worry about it running if I soak it so that's not an option for me but I used to do this anyway because it's fast and it's quick and easy and while the paper is still wet I'm tearing the edges here, so it's going to add to that nice rustic, you know, this is a look I'm going for. I don't want those real straight edges. I kind of want them to look ratty and tatty. And of course, after all of that paint on the shiny surface, we're gonna have to put some Mod Podge on to keep it on. So first I'm gonna start by Mod Podging the labels on. And here they are, you guys, they're so pretty. I mean, they're just coffee cans and they've got beautiful colors, beautiful dimension. Just, it's a beautiful little herbal garden and it didn't cost anything. I really love it. And of course, you guys, <laughs> I staged this for you because I just got the seeds today and they obviously weren't gonna grow in time for the video. So I just put some greenery in there that looked kind of herby. I don't know if that's a word, herby but I'm really pleased with the way this turns out. And this is more or less how it's going to work, except it's gonna be the real herbs growing there. It's on my side yard, perfect place. It's the only place in the yard that I know doesn't get any bird poo poo, knock on wood. So I should be good to go. If not, they'll be coming indoors, but right now they're gonna be there and I'm really pleased with the way that these turned out. For this craft, you're going to need a large coffee can and some white paint. I'm using White Primer by Kills, K-I-L-Z, because I really wanted my white paint to stick on the metal and not come off, and I wasn't planning on distressing it too much, so that's what I went with. But you could probably get away with using chalk paint as well, because I do end up sealing it at the end with Mod Podge. So I'm going to give it just one coat of white paint, and then you're also going to need some cardboard. I am using the lid to trace out four, I do a total of four circles all together. And that's because I'm making a lid for this and I want it to look pretty thick. I'm making a faux wood 
you know, lid. I know you can get the little Walmart wooden disc, but I think those are a little too thin. You know, when you see them at the stores, at least what I'm making, when you see them at the stores, the lids are usually pretty thick. They're close to a half an inch thick in height, and I think that's part of the charm. So even if I had gotten the wooden circle, I probably would have ended up gluing about three or four pieces of cardboard on the bottom of that anyway, and then put the spackling around the edge and still made it a thicker lid just because I think that looks really cute when it's on the kitchen counter. So all you do then is you just glue your four pieces of cardboard together. And this is another craft, by the way, to get rid of your Amazon boxes for those of you that asked me to do some more crafts with cardboard. This is a great way to do it right here. You're just gonna glue those four pieces together. And as you saw, it doesn't really matter if one of them is in a broken shape. Just make sure that if you do have one that's in a broken shape, you know, where you didn't have a complete circle or maybe it bent there and then it came apart, that you glue it in the middle between two solid circles because you want, you know, that help, it helps keep the structural integrity together a little bit better if the outer ones are a solid piece of cardboard. I'm just gonna cover it with joint compound. For those of you that watch my channel, you've seen me do this with a little tiny cutting board. You've seen me do it, uh, I've got a whole separate video out there on how to make a faux wood farmhouse plank for a farmhouse sign. It's the same principle. It's a great way, you guys, when you don't have wood or you don't have access to wood or you have too much cardboard and you want to get rid of your cardboard. It's a great way to get a really beautiful faux wood piece in any shape you want. And another thing I really like when you do this technique is by the time you glue all of your pieces of cardboard together and you put your joint compound or your spackling on the top and the bottom and the sides, you end up with a really nice weight. You know, it's not too light. It doesn't just blow away when someone walks by it. It lays flush down on a flat surface so it can work as a lid. You end up with something that feels good quality and looks good quality. So it's a great fake. And I'll tell you, I have been doing this for over 20 years with all kinds of things. And it is a great way to make it by faking it. I'll tell you, and it costs pennies. So I blue dry it this time and it dries good enough for you to flip it over, do the other side and finish the sides. And you're gonna see me here untape it a minute off of that tile. It's just on wax paper and I will put it on another surface so that it can dry while I finish the rest of the craft. And here's my printable. It's a free printable down below. You just click that link and it will take you to the printable. You can print it on up. And I'm just measuring now for the shape of the coffee can so that, you know, it'll fit. just checking for size there and that's a good idea before you commit with glue because I have made mistakes in the past where I've gone to put it on and I found out it was too big or it was crooked or it wasn't the right size so lay it down stand up take a look make sure you you know like the way it looks before you commit and I use just regular old school glue I've seen some crafters use spray adhesive. You can use whatever you want to stick it down. I'm working in a room without a lot of ventilation. I don't have the windows open, so I kind of avoid things that I breathe in, you know, anything airborne like sprays, but I know spray adhesive works really well, as you know, as well as school glue. But with honestly, you guys, I don't know, maybe I should have told you this many videos ago, but when you're gluing things down, it doesn't really matter what you glue it down with as long as you seal it with the Mod Podge because the Mod Podge is going to hold it down anyway. So if you wanna save some money or if you find another adhesive works better, go ahead and use that, it's just fine. So here I'm taking my favorite water-based acrylic stain. It's odorless, I really like this stuff a lot. It's kind of taking the place of the Waverly Antique Wax or any brand antique wax to make faux wood. And especially on joint compound or spackling or smooth surface like that it's doing just a stand-up brilliant job of creating faux wood grain really beautiful you can see it here and now i'm just taking some super glue gel and i'm gluing down a wine cork which i purposely cut at a little bit of an angle and stained as well to match and here it is you guys the final result and it came out absolutely so cute I'm showing you up close how the faux wood looks. It's got grain, it's got texture, 
it's got dimension I think it looks better than the real wood in some cases you guys if you're going for the rustic look this is it and I hope you guys get to try this craft it was a lot of fun I'm using a coffee can, but you can use any can you want. But I'm doing one for Christmas because I happen to store my tea bags in this container. So I thought it would be nice to keep it up with the seasons. And this is a free printout. It's going to be down below in my description box below my video. So you can print it up and cut it out and get it from there. Now I'm starting off painting this container with white. It was primer from Kills, K-I-L-Z. And I'm just going to Mod Podge this on. Now I did want to make this look a little more festive. So I went ahead and I added some distressed looking red along the top and the bottom edges there. And then using the lid that came with this coffee can, I just went ahead and traced three circles with good thick cardboard in that shape of the lid for measurement. And now I'm gonna glue some of the Dollar Tree towering wooden blocks in between this. Now I did this originally for height and for weight, but to be honest, when I made the lid before, I didn't do this. I just used four pieces of cardboard and glued them all together. Now haste makes waste, you guys, because I was trying to save some time by not having to cut out two or three more circles of cardboard. And now I'm covering the edges with tape because there's that air gap in between and it makes it really fragile and more difficult to work with. Now it came up beautiful. It's sturdy when everything's said and done and I love my lid but would be easier and faster if you just cut out two or three more circles, depending on how thick, you know, how high the height of the lid, how high you want yours to be. It would be easier just to do cardboard and skip the towering block altogether. It wasn't necessary. So now I want my top to be wood. I really want to go for this wood paneling, shiplap, pa you know, palette kind of look. And I'm using the jumbo craft sticks from Walmart. And then the two ones on the end are medium craft sticks from the Dollar Tree because they were the other ones were way too big. And I kind of like it when they're different widths too. I think that looks more rustic and more authentic. So I'm using spackling. For those of you that watch my videos, you've seen me do this trick before. Spackling is amazing in the UK. And someone came on from Belgium as well to tell me it's called polyphila. So in the UK, it's polyphila also in Belgium I guess so I'm guessing around Europe it's called polyphila that's what I'm using here sorry I don't know the name of it in every country but you use it to fill in nail holes on your wall so whatever you guys use for that purpose that's what I'm using for this craft and I did the edges smooth it out let it dry overnight and now I'm just sanding the wood and the sides to smooth it down just a little bit and I decide I want a green lid I just want to jazz this up a little bit more make it a little more festive for Christmas so I'm going with a light green here you can use any green that you want I'm gonna go with two color greens I'm gonna use a light one so I can distress the wood to show a little bit of wood and make it look rustic and farmhouse and then I'm going to add some of that forest green paint later and dry brush it on just to give it a little bit more depth and contrast and I sealed the entire container with a clear matte varnish spray paint this time I'm going to use one of those Dollar Tree little wood pieces you get I actually think it might be birch wood like little mini birch woods there for the lid because I want to imitate the feeling of a Christmas tree trunk and the greenery of the Christmas tree itself. Last time I used a wine cork I cut it at an angle to imitate a pumpkin stem but we're doing it up for Christmas now and I'm just shading around the lid, dry brushing around the edge and that's it. It came up so cute. I love this craft.
and for this craft you're going to need a coffee can or a can in your choosing it can be any can it doesn't have to be a coffee can any can will work so if you have an extra large can for another food product that would be fine and this is the decaf coffee from Walmart in case some of you are wondering if you know if you like coffee you can look for coffee that comes in the coffee cans they are fantastic for crafting and i'm just applying a little bit more of the kills primer this is going to be able to be kept up all year round it's for valentine's day but it's one that when the seasons are over like summertime it's going to be perfect to keep on your kitchen counter because it's neutral and you saw a printout there that I made. That's going to be a free printable down below in my description box. And for you coffee lovers, I did not forget you. I also made one that says coffee and me as well. So after I did the primer and it dried, I go ahead and apply some apple barrel paint in the color khaki on those lines there. I just took advantage of the lines on the can. Now I'm artificially adding a faux line at the top here because I want the white line at the top not to be so wide so I just go ahead and add it in there and I'm just using a tissue for applying the paint I'm kind of applying it more like a stain so I'm putting it on and wiping it off so I get a nice streaky distressed rustic look this is the water-based acrylic stain that I spoke about earlier in the video there's a link for it down below in my description box it's a really really slippery and easy to work with it makes a beautiful wood grain and then I chose to use a wine cork for the lid here I just stained that too using a little bit of super glue now to apply it and now I'm cutting out my free printable now I'm Mod Podging this label on and a lot of you asked me how I managed to get it down in the grooves with no wrinkles I use a wet sponge and I keep pressing but the most important thing is that once you get glue on any part of the sponge you have to move to a clean part or you will accidentally lift your paper up and tear it so I was frequently stopping and rinsing my sponge out and then going back and doing it again so it always has to be a fresh clean sponge when you're pressing you're gonna see me do it in a minute here so you'll have a visual but that's really really important also when you're gluing your labels down with Mod Podge and you're gluing on uneven surfaces I brush the Mod Podge in the opposite direction you can see me do it there to shove that Mod Podge under the edges to get a nice clean wet you know you really want to make sure you have enough mod podge there in the grooves and a lot of times when you paint it on you put your label down there isn't enough swimming up underneath there so you want to just brush a little backwards and push it under there you're kind of forcefully getting more mod podge under there so that you can get nice clean edges and you saw me pressing there with a sponge remember to rinse your sponge and now I'm going to add some of the Dollar Tree ribbon on top of this lid so that it ties in the rest of my decor and it came out so so cute you guys I can't wait to put this on my kitchen counter For this craft you're going to need a can I'm using a coffee can because I have a lot of them a heart shape of some kind some scrap material and some buttons or embellishments whatever you want some ribbon just anything that you want to decorate with I'm gonna start by giving this a coat of a very neutral soft kind of creamy tan color here Now you're going to take the heart shapes and you're going to hot glue them together but you're going to leave a little opening because we're going to be stuffing these you can see me using some polyfiberfill. I purchased the pillows from Walmart 
they're about three dollars and 79 cents where i live and they come in the center bins but you get a lot more polyfiber fill in the pillows than you do when you buy polyfiber fill from a fabric store, at least where I live. So get the cheapest deal you can get. You can also just use cotton balls pulled apart as well. That would be just fine. And those are usually really accessible for most people. So use a cotton ball pulled apart. You want to pull it apart though, so it's not too lumpy. You want to really make it wispy. That's the trick there to make it nice and smooth. You're putting in little tiny bits at a time. And now I'm just decorating them and making them look really, really cute. So you're gonna see what I do here. I'm using the Dollar Tree ribbon. I love to cut this ribbon in half. One, because it looks, you know, if you're making small things, it fits better. And two, the edges tend to fray when you work with it and touch it, and it makes it look more rustic and distressed. You know, that look that I'm going for, that vintage look where things look a little ratty tatty, like they've been around for a while. So you can see it there on the edges. It's already starting to fray a bit. I just love that look. If you don't, you can leave it intact and, you know, one piece, but I love that look. And what you see me tying on there is some mop thread. I pull the mop thread apart. I get the little individual yarn strands, and I love those as well. I think they're really, they kind of have a natural curl to them, a wave, and they also are very fuzzy looking, so I just love that look for what I'm going for. And I'm just using some spare buttons that I have. I showed you the Dollar Tree buttons because you can paint those, but I have a lot of spare buttons that I'm probably never going to use, you know, I'm never going to use them. So I decided to go ahead and use them for this craft and just decorate them. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the water-based stain this time and stain these little hearts and make them look, you know, rustic and primitive and match the rest of my home decor. And that's what we have when I'm all done. Now back to the coffee can here. I love these Dollar Tree lace doilies. I've had a thing for paper lace doilies since I was a little girl. I just think they're so pretty. I've always wanted to craft with them, but I never really knew what to do. So I'm really trying to make an effort here. I do have to cut it down a little smaller because it's not gonna fit on the top, you know, the outside of the coffee can. It was a little bit too big. And I take some more of that paper I bought from Amazon. It's aged paper. This is the striped sheet out of that pack. That's below my description box as well if you want to see what I bought. And now I'm just using my finger to apply the Mod Podge. I do use my fingers a lot in crafting, you guys. It just helps me. Sometimes I can't get the look I want with a brush and I feel like I have more control with my fingers. Let me know how many of you guys do that too. And now I'm taking some spare plastic bags and some old moss that used to be really green, but it's actually going brown, which is what I wanted, and some absolutely beautiful lamb's ear I got at Hobby Lobby. It was $10 for six feet. It was on sale, a garland. I bought three of them. They're gorgeous. It's like the perfect lamb's ear. And I'm using that on the top. And I'm just taking a skewer from the Dollar Tree and poking the material. It's super easy to do because, you know, the end of those skewers are sharp. And I've made a little heart garden, you guys. It's so cute. Let me know what you think, but I absolutely love this.
For this craft, you're going to need a large can. I'm using a coffee can, some cardboard, and some craft sticks, and either a wine cork or some towering blocks and some sisal rope or twine. It's totally up to you. I was showing you the burnt umber with how much black paint I put in it. I use that often for a stain. I add a little bit of water to it. I added water to this one to make like a watercolor stain on the edge there because this was actually a watercolor bunny print that is free and it will be down below in my description box. Just click on that and there's a link there. So the next thing I'm doing is I'm tracing a lid and I end up cutting the lid back about the width of the sisal rope that I'm using. So if you use nautical rope or twine or whatever you're going to do, make sure you account for that in your final measurement. And I end up using five layers of cardboard. Once I have those all together, I trim those to make sure they're all even on the edges there. And I'm just going to connect all of them with hot glue. That's it, you just glue them all together. And believe it or not, when these lids are done, I've made, this is my third one, because I wanted to change it up a little bit, I was getting bored, and I was having fun. <laughs> but they're really heavy when you're done. No matter what method I show you, they're very heavy and they sit on top. So I end up taking some masking tape, I tape those craft sticks together. I don't know why I forgot that, I usually do that, but I started to do them on their own, and I thought, what are you doing? It's a great method to tape them together. And see how I'm taking the scissors and kind of nibbling at them? Kudos to my mother for that tip. She actually has dry toenails and she has to cut them where she kind of nibbles with her scissors. That's what she told me one day. And she said, well, that way they won't split. And I thought, ooh, I wonder if that would work with craft sticks. And it does. So thank you to my mother for that. It works beautifully. So just nibble away and you shouldn't have any trouble with those craft sticks unless there's a major fault line in them. Sometimes you can't help it, but nine out of 10 times it works. And now I'm just going to finish it off with a little bit of the antiqued paper that I bought from Amazon and a glue stick. I really love these glue sticks from Dollar Tree. Another person asked me, how are they holding up? Because we both remembered back in the 1990s, they were just absolute garbage. <laughs> Nothing stuck. And you know, I was wrong. I said there was six to a package on my last video. There's eight. It is a great deal. And I've done one project now. It's going on four weeks and so far so good. It's holding just fine. So really pleased with the glue sticks. Now I chose sisal rope because it smells like sweet hay and kind of has that energy of grass. And it, there was just something about Easter and baskets and bunnies and grass. They all just kind of go really well. And I was, you know, thought it would be a nice change. You do have to burn off the hairs for a while to get it nice and smooth. But for the edge of the craft sticks, I opt to use the Walmart twine. It's a little thicker than the jute twine at the Dollar Tree. And I'm showing you in real time here how slow I was going because if you're really careful and slow, you can get a nice clean edge. And it gave it like a graduated edge too because it's not as thick as the sisal rope. Really pretty in real life, really pretty. And I'm using the towering block using wood glue spoke about this many times in my videos but for those of you that are new wood glue actually bonds with wood at a molecular level it is the strongest glue you can use for wood super glue is great i mean there's a lot of strong glues out there but if you're looking for one for raw wood not painted wood because once you paint it it's no longer raw but raw wood it really really holds so it's a great choice for that and i'm using a little burnt umber to edge it and this is what we end up with
So this is my inspiration piece I saw online. It's a little small side table and it's $199. I used two coffee cans and an old frisbee lid that I was going to throw away from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use some pool noodles, but it would have actually been better to use paper towel holders or the center of, the, not a holder, I'm sorry, the center of the paper towel like these. But I wanted to do this craft to show you guys how it looks, even though I didn't have enough of the paper towel centers, or you could use foil centers, they just all have to be uniform size. And you also could use a stovetop cover from the Dollar Tree. They're only 50 cents each because you get two for a dollar. You can also use a lid to an old cookie tin. I mean, just be creative and have fun with this one, but you're going to need a top for the top of the little table there. I'm kind of aiming more to make a planter with mine, or you could use it for a little table, but I decide it looks really cute as a planter. So we're starting off measuring those pool noodles and then cutting them down to size. And now I'm going to cut them in half. I started off by thinking I was gonna keep them whole, but they were just too big and too round and clunky looking. This is why I say the paper towel rolls would have looked better. Make sure they're the sturdy kind of paper towel cardboard centers there because I think if they're too thin, they might bend. So you want those nice strong ones that you get with the higher end paper towels. But I held up, I had about five and I held them up and it looked better. So we work with what we have, but it turns out beautiful regardless. So I end up cutting these in half and I'm gonna go ahead and glue them around the coffee can. Again, I just used regular old Dollar Tree school glue. It worked just fine and I deliberately left the paper on because that paper is glued on really strong and that was a better surface for my little pool noodle to stick to. And I'm just going about gluing them on. I do go and get a hairband to put around the coffee cans because I realized that since I'm using wet glue, it's going to need time to dry. Now, if you use the center of a paper towel, uh, you know, like this, I showed you in the beginning, those little cardboard things, you could use hot glue, but you can't really do it with these foam pool noodles. I was too worried they would melt, and if they were to change shape at all, or kind of like have a dent and kind of cave in a little bit, it would ruin the entire craft. So just to be extra careful, I used cold glue for this. And I do end up putting a rubber band on the top and on the bottom, you can see it there. They leave marks, like little indentations, but they look really cool. They look like a factory etching. So it just makes it look more expensive and high end. I was pleased with that. But if it didn't have that, you guys, if you use a paper towel and you don't get that little edging, that's fine. It still would look good. It's just, in other words, I wasn't upset about it. It all worked out fine. And now I'm taking the Kills Primer K-I-L-Z and I'm going to give these pool noodles two thick coats. I wanted to let you know, after you paint the pool noodles with two coats, they come up really strong and stiff and sturdy and kind of dry looking like concrete, which was a wonderful thing. Make sure you use a latex paint though. I wouldn't recommend just acrylic craft paint. I'm showing you the Frisbee I spray painted with some paint and primer. And again, I'm using cold glue after I trimmed the pool noodles at the top so it's nice and even. And this came up absolutely gorgeous.
For this DIY, you're going to need a bath mat from the Dollar Tree and a cylinder shape. Now, I chose a coffee can, and that's the brand I'm using that still makes the metal cans. Kirkland's also makes metal cans, and you can buy that on Amazon. You can also shop around and look for a container that you would like from the Dollar Tree. I liked this DIY so much that I ended up making a smaller one with the leftover piece using a large tomato can. So... I just think they're so cute. Next, I'm taking some masking tape because it's cheap, easy, and fast, and it works. And I'm going to wrap these cans up, and that will create a surface that the hot glue will stick to, and then the bath mat will stick to that. And I've never had anything fall apart, so I can vouch by it. I think you'd probably get away with other tapes as well. Just make sure that the surface is kind of porous and it looks like it's going to be friendly to both, you know, your tape's going to stick to the metal and the hot glue will stick to the bath mat because it's sticking to the tape, that kind of thing. You want to make sure everything's hitting the mark there. You might want to do a little test run if you're going to use a different kind of tape. And I'm just wrapping this up and it folds really easy on the inside too. So I don't really have to add the tape. I realize when I'm doing this, I don't really need the tape on the inside. I just do a little bit of hot glue and it's enough to tack it down because once I put the greenery in, that's going to hold it as well. And there's my small tomato can that I made. It's my little friendly, it's a team effort here, you guys. <laughs> I just think it's so cute. I love the Dollar Tree bath mats. I can think of so many fun DIYs for them. This is just the beginning. But there I am. I'm just going to put some greenery in it. This is going to go in my bathroom. If you have farmhouse boho or any kind of modern look, this is a great way to get a high-end fast planter just to put some greenery around your house. And the last step is to add a little bit of paint with my paint pen, and we're all done. This brings us to our last coffee can craft and of course you're going to need a coffee can some cardboard a printable and this is also a free printable down below this is a summer coffee can I'm using it now for my summer tea can and I'm gonna paint it like I always do with my white primer by Kills K-I-L-Z it just works great on shiny surfaces and we're going to use the cardboard trick again. This is an amazing trick. You cannot tell it's cardboard when you're done making these lids. And right now for this DIY, I'm gonna be showing you a different lid. So I have some Buffalo check material. I'm going to just roughly trace it out. And I'm using the spray adhesive from the Dollar Tree. I've never used this before. It's my first time I took a chance. I was impressed. I mean, it smells kind of like a Mod Podge glue, not quite like Mod Podge. To me, Mod Podge has a very distinct smell, but it performs like a glue, but not really like an Elmer's glue. It's, more, it's somewhere between Mod Podge and an Elmer's glue. And it even looks like that, as you can see. So I just saturated the top of the cardboard and I'm gonna glue this Buffalo check material down. And I'm just smearing it with my fingers. It stays nice and flat. It doesn't crinkle up. It worked really good and I wanted to dry it really quick so I took a blow dryer it dried nice and clear so overall a plus for the Dollar Tree spray adhesive if you guys have had different experiences let me know but this was my first time and it was a good experience now I'm gonna take some glue I'm actually using hot wood glue because I found it to be much much stronger to glue the material down and as you can tell, I wasn't worried if it was even or not. It doesn't matter because we're going to be covering the sides. You're not even going to see that. And I'm using that antiqued paper again that I ordered from Amazon. It's down below my description box just to cover the bottom. I mean, you can go ahead and use material if you want. It's just I never see the lid. Even when I lift the lid up, I kind of keep it facing down. So I just use a pretty paper, but you can certainly cover it with more material. And I swapped out the Dollar Tree basket with a lighter Dollar Tree basket because I think that will be pretty with the theme of lemonade and summer this is my summer tea can and we use that for the edge and it works brilliantly super easy to take apart as you saw I just cut the top off and then they just slide on out and really fun I have a lot of fun DIYs planned for that 
to. So I going ahead and covering the edge to make it look nice and neat. And here's a leftover knob that I have from a thrift flip I did with a, I believe it belonged to like a china cabinet. It was like a door without the glass. I painted it and put a wreath in the middle of it. Some of you might remember. This is a knob that came off. Always save your knobs, you guys. Now you can use a wooden bead or any of the other lids that I showed you in this video, but I thought this would be fun to change it up and give you guys additional ideas. And I'm painting it black with just acrylic paint. I did spray it with a clear polyacrylic. I didn't show that, but I did because I'm gonna handle it a lot and I don't want it to chip. And that's it, look how cute that came out. I absolutely love that lid. So now we're moving on to the printable. And by the way, I created this printable with a combination of free copyright free imagery online. Go to canva.com and check it out. It's a free website that allows you to create all kinds of things for the different social sites for your own personal use. Also, Pexels, free stock photos, Google just free photos and a bunch of stuff comes up and I kind of upload onto that site and mix and match it. You can create some beautiful free imagery for your personal use, but I absolutely love the way this one came out. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. I hope everybody is having a great summer. And as always, you guys, I wish you an awesome week. And until the next video, breathe deep, fret not, and do things that make you happy.